Ahoy plant lovers! Today I'm going to do a quick video of Colocasia, kind of the Colocasia resident expert in this house. Uh, so I thought I'd have fun sharing with you all the things that I've learned about Colocasia, types we have. Um, maybe if you're new to Colocasia, you might learn some tips on how to get your Colocasia growing well. And if you're experienced with Colocasia, maybe I'll show you something new or share something new with you that I've learned uh, this season or the past. <laughs> okay, so the types and varieties we have here in this garden are the Black Ripple, the Black Gecko, the Black Beauty, the Illustrious, the Coal Miner, Aloha, um, the Mojito, Coffee Cup, Tea Cup, Bikini Teeny, um, running a blank. <laughs> Blue Hawaii, Pharaoh's Mask, Nancy's Revenge, White Lava, Fontancii, and did I say mojito already? Uh, we have a lot of mojito. Propagated that one a lot. So the main thing about Colocasia, they're either clumpers, like clusters, or they're runners. Uh, the Colocasia that are runners shoot out this long, like, root. Uh, it's kind of like a branch from the roots uh, that is meant to you know start popping up colocasia along this like arm <laughs> and uh, I'll show you a good example of that right now we're gonna follow the Nancy's Revenge runner um, I have put some soil on top of the runner because it was fully exposed earlier but that root runs over there and you can see it's got a new baby leaf coming in right there and that is from the Nancy's Revenge, which probably needs to be repotted. Uh, I'd like to take that up as soon as that other pup starts to get going. To get going. Uh, Ferris Mask got a new leaf coming. And here is the teacup colocasia. You can see the runner right here. I actually have two runners coming out from this guy. And he started growing right here. So that was the teacup, also known as coffee cup, but this is a lighter version of the coffee cup as a runner, and also the Nancy's Revenge. This over here is the mojito, and it is not a runner. It clusters and clumps. It's kind of like the philodendrons, who are either climbers or crawlers. And then you have the illustrious, which is definitely a clumper. <laughs> It likes to cluster together and just shoots up tons of little babies everywhere. As you can see here, this thing is kind of taking over this bed. There's so many illustrious babies popping up. It's crazy. I'm about to come in here and grab a bunch of them and put them in pots just so they don't take over this bed. Because as you can tell, it's getting a little crazy back here. Um, the other thing about this illustrious, we had a really interesting uh, thing happen here where I had a, a hole dug for some pot, of, you know, a pot to be put in. Uh, a root kind of got exposed um, in this hole. I don't know if you can see that very well. But you see that root on the right side? This root was barely sticking out whenever I pulled the pot out. And it continued growing just like a runner would. And it put up this new... And I would say this guy is probably, you know, like a month old. He's taken a while to grow. <laughs> Uh, I think that this bed has so many things in it that everything's growing a little bit slower now. And it's even losing the black in it, which is kind of sad. I don't know why it's doing that. Either, either the uh, leaves are maturing, you know, aging. Uh, you know, the leaves have been around for a while and they're just kind of fading over time. This one definitely. Because whenever you take the dead leaves off, you know, like the oldest leaf, well, by the time it doesn't look good and you cut it off, uh, the black is not really present anymore. Um, 
So I've got a working theory that the black fades in the leaf over time. It's really nice and strong. When, like this is a new leaf, isn't it? No. <laughs> um, where is it? Okay, this one back here is new. And nice and strong color. You can see this one probably is new. But that's my theory with the illustrious that when they pop up, uh, the new leaves are very strong in color. Like this looks fairly like a black beauty almost. But, you know, the others definitely look like lustrous. <clears throat> so, that's my working theory that the uh, leaves turn kind of green the longer they're around. And they're nice and black when they start out. However, you can definitely tell the difference between illustrious and bikini teeny is a lot like the coffee cup and teacup, but it's not quite. Uh, I remember seeing these grow, I was thinking, what is this? It looks like a plant that's trying to be a teacup, coffee cup, and not succeeding very well. Maybe it was a young coffee cup or something, but then studying the coffee cup and teacups, realized that is not the case. So, Bikini Teeny has been a fun one to watch. It's been a fairly slow grower. It's kind of stalled out. I think it's because it's in that pot and I never put it in the ground just because I didn't have time. Let's get into the black and green colocasia. Uh, you can see here, at first I thought this was spider mite damage. Um, when I got this plant, it had these on them. Uh, I don't like the grower. I don't buy from him anymore. Um, he gave me a lot of plants with spider mites and this really bad fungus. I, it might be rust fungus, it might be pest damage, but uh, we do have some beautiful new leaves and this is the aloha. So out of the black and green colocasia, I think the aloha has become my favorite. It's kind of got that like oily sheen to it and it's got a it's very glossy that's it's flimsy but glossy it's not thick and it's just a very interesting design uh this thing has gotten real big since i planted it it's actually taking over the bed now i had to move a plant out and I need to move that guy too we're going to take those xanadus out but these guys will get big we actually do not have any mulch no artificial mulch in this bed. It's just fallen leaves and pine needles. And uh, it is time to go in here and weed it, but I think I've only like done a major weeding once this season. And we're in Florida, that's pretty crazy. Okay, where is the other black? Oh, the coal miner. So this is the coal miner. And if it's hard to see on the camera, uh, the coal miners, definitely have like a faded kind of look to them. They are, their black is not strong black. Uh, it's kind of like a kind of like a rusty gray and I don't think the camera is showing it very well. This is a new leaf. It's a little bit darker. Uh, you also get these interesting uh, like radioactive lines that kind of come on here and when the new leaf is new those lines are really cool. I'll show a picture. But that is the coal miner. Uh, as you can tell, it looks a little bit like the Black Beauty. But it has kind of like white veins mixed in with that uh, fairly common blackness. And it's not like a splotchy black. Like, it looks like, the illustrious looks like digital camo. And that's my opinion. <laughs> and these guys kind of look like a... Uh, like a watercolor wash on a uh, on a lustrous leaf. Okay, so the next black and green colocasia is the Black Beauty. And these guys just have tons of black. They're called Black Beauty because they have a lot of black. The new leaves emerge and they're very like rich in, you know, purples and blues, like 
of really dark purples and blues. <clears throat> you know, it's a different black than the black ripple. Like the black ripple comes out when it becomes black and it just seems like color just gets sucked up into that black ripple. But with these guys, color actually emerges with the sunlight. You can see some really cool colors with these and I love them. All right, so next, the Illustrious. Okay, this is what I call like that digital camo look. It's a very interesting, like watercolory, but strong washes of color within the space between the veins. I don't know what the technical term for that is. But I, when the uh, plant was starting out and it wasn't just like tons of babies in here and they probably were getting uh, enough nutrients that uh, they were being well fed. Uh, these guys definitely come out very colorful. Um, I'll sit, show you some pictures without filters. I mean, they they just drop your jaw. They're so uh, intense with their, uh, you know, black and green patterns. Okay, I'm getting mosquito bites. <laughs> uh, the illustrious also is very similar to the heterochromia. That's another one that I've seen that I would like to eventually get and just kind of have like all the black and green colocasia, like the Pokemon. Um, you can see the black gecko over there. That's another one. I'm tempted to think that all black colocasia new leaves are green and they turn black over time because that's what I've seen from all my black colocasia, which are the black ripple and the black gecko. Black beauty. See, this black beauty is very similar to the illustrious. I believe this illustrious is a mutated uh, strand of the uh, black beauty. But the black beauty, you're going to see all these leaves are like full and black. There's only this kind of like the like the Nancy's Revenge but revert inverted. You, know, you have white stripe here for Nancy's Revenge but green stripe there for Black Beauty and black leaf. The illustrious is not like that. There is a lot of green. It kind of looks like a hybrid of a green leaf and a black leaf. Over here we have the white lava. It's doing pretty well over there. I'll show you now with you my technique on how to easily care for colocasia because they do like to be, you know, soaking wet their root system. They never want to dry out and it's hard to do that because they like sun. So these are kind of like bog plants, live in the swamp where they can get sunlight, but they can stay wet. Let me show you how to do that. Here's a mojito that I propagated a while back and it's doing really well now. Um, give you a little look at these leaves. This is the newest one. Oh, I think that's a hummingbird. <laughs> but um, you can see the roots are coming out of the holes in that nursery pot. And this is my method for, you know, taking care of the colocasia, their high water needs. So it's just in a pretty normal setup for soil and nursery pot. This tray has, you know, pebbles in it. You can buy a $5 bag of pebbles. It'll fill like 50 of these trays. And what you do is you fill that tray with some pebbles and it acts like a water tank, you know, like a water tower. You can just keep this thing full of water. It'll dry up some days. If you ever see it dry, just immediately start here, fill it up with water. When the water level rises, then you can water through the top some. 
it's hard to overwater colocasia. It really is hard to overwater them. Um, they like sun, so uh, give them a good bit of sun and keep their feet wet, as they say. Okay, I'm going to give you a quick example just to show you. This is my water tray, which I believe is something like a candy bin or something. It had nuts in it, maybe. <laughs> but uh, now it has pebbles in it and water. So you just fill that thing up until you... Yep, it's overflowing now. And you really only have to do that once every couple of days. Uh, keep an eye on it, but... You know, your situation might be different. This is getting a good bit of sun. I think probably about four to five hours of direct sun in the day. And uh, usually with the amount of rainfall we get, I don't even have to water that thing but once a week. It just kind of naturally fills up and acts like a good water tank. All right, so we've now talked about the water and light aspects for colocasia and their kind of their regrowth um, how they spread and everything uh, the only other thing to talk about is the soil uh, colocasia aren't too picky with their soil um, they like something that's going to hold water and give it nutrients uh, garden soil from your local place is usually fine they're pretty uh, hardy as far as being able to take any kind of soil uh, they're not too picky like oh you need this in your soil you need this in your soil they're fairly straightforward and forgiving um, this is the mojito you can see it is fairly big down here uh, it is in the soil it's in the ground and your plants in the ground are going to get bigger than the ones in the pot or the ones in a pot uh, you can have a big pot and that might change things up, but if you have like your typical smaller nursery pots, this is a big pot. <laughs> uh, smaller nursery pots, you know, like the ones over there, the smaller mojitos that have propagated. Uh, those are not going to get too big. Uh, they're only going to get as big as your um, root system can get. So uh, let's take a look now at this mojito which is in a pot still I never took it out of its nursery pot this is the one I propagated guys from and I think he's starting to get a little bit strangled back here uh, I can barely see him I have to move several leaves to see him so I think it's time to move that guy another thing that you probably would like to do when you have colocasia is give it a lot of sun and keep the root system either covered by foliage or by mulch. That way uh, the root system is going to tend to stay oh, more wet <laughs> and uh, the, uh, the leaves are going to get as much sun as they can. So uh, in this kind of setup you can see these leaves are getting all the sun and you can't even see where the root system is and it is mulched so I probably come back here and water this uh, maybe like once or twice a week if it's been you know a dry spell and there's no rain if there's been a lot of rain I don't even have to worry about watering these guys so that's kind of nice uh, you can kind of create a setup to where you don't have to give these guys a lot of care and handling. <laughs> the other thing about the colocasia, I forgot to mention this, but uh, if you do not propagate it and you let all the new babies come up, uh, it's going to detract from the overall size of your leaves. You know, if you have lots of babies, uh, you only have a certain amount of resources. And if those resources are going to babies, the adults are not going to get as big as they can be, as big as they can get. So, propagating colocasia is fairly easy, and whenever I propagate them, I generally wait until the leaf is, 
you know, that size, about the size of my hand, um, this would be an okay size leaf to say, all right, I'm going to separate it from its mother. It's big enough to take off, and I would start it. I did a video on these propagations in the mojito. Uh, I would start it in a pot that size. It's got some good height to that pot. And I put it in a tray of water, just like that, and I keep it out of the sun. So this is our little indirect filtered light station. I would put it somewhere in here for about a week. And I would say after five days, you'll see a new leaf come up on it. And I've never had a failed propagation, so that's really encouraging. Uh, it tells me it's really easy to do. Uh, this is a propagated illustrious from that bed over there. And um, these are this leaf and this leaf are both completely new leaves since I propagated it. This was one of the original leaves. I think there was two original and it held on to both. You know, the first couple of days, the leaves might flop over on a day or two. It's kind of weird how sometimes they flop over, sometimes they don't. <laughs> it's really weird. Just don't cut them off give them a day or two to see if they'll bounce back. Uh, if not, it's okay. This is the Pharaoh's Mask Colocasia, and it's probably the coolest Colocasia I have, or maybe the coolest Colocasia there is. <laughs> you can argue with me on that one. It has really deep veins, and it is also the most expensive Colocasia uh, we have in the garden. It's anywhere from fifty to a hundred dollars for a, a like a starter plant. <laughs> so I got this as a starter plant. It had one leaf. All these are uh, new leaves. I think it has three right now. And when they're babies, they actually don't have those deep veins. Uh, that is a sign of a mature leaf. Those really really deep veins so this guy's getting a lot of filtered sunlight uh, I put him there when I first got him I had a mail ordered and he lost one leaf in the mail and uh, he was you know needing some protection to get started you know when you mail your plants they're in darkness uh, for like four days so uh, it's hard to get them rehabbed uh, but anyways, that's my Pharaoh's Mask. That's probably the coolest and most expensive Caucasia we have. And uh, it's doing really well. Hopefully it'll shoot up a baby that I can propagate. But I will probably dig that up and move it inside for the winter and see if I can't keep it alive. This is the Blue Hawaii. I like the Blue Hawaii because it's kind of similar to the Pharaoh's Mask. It does have those same veins, uh, but I guess same color veins. It doesn't have the deep veinage. Whenever the new leaf emerges, it's a, like a bright green. It looks like kind of like a Maui gold when it first comes out. And that color slowly comes in. Uh, this week is about, or this leaf is about a week old. And you can see the babies down there. Uh, they are, they've been babies a long time. I have not seen much growth out of those babies. It's pretty interesting to watch uh, all plants grow and see their growing habits. Uh, we have the black ripple back there. Uh, that, that one has grown, uh, it's trying to focus on the palm tree. The black ripple has grown a little bit slower than I expected. Um, it is kind of like the black magic. Uh, it starts out with green leaves, and once sunlight starts resting on those leaves, it turns black. So it's pretty cool to do that little, like, uh, color change. Makes me wonder if it's the same way they get the uh, glow-in-the-dark stuff. Uh, you can compare the black ripple over there to the black gecko, which <laughs> we call the black gecko like our drunken Colocasia, because... It's amazing how fast it has grown. Like, that was a baby when we got it. The black gecko is a fast grower. It shot up these giant leaves, and then it just kind of flopped over and, 
like like a drunken guy. <laughs> so he's just like flopped over everywhere. I tried to support him, but it's kind of hard to get back there. I'm guessing he just hasn't been able to penetrate deeply into the uh, soil to really get those deep roots to anchor. But you can see here the black gecko leaf, <laughs> the drunken black gecko. Uh, it's, it's pretty huge. Like, that's my hand. Uh, he's, he's got a winding trunk over here. But um, yeah, I'm going to also propagate the black gecko and pull him over into a different bed. This bed is just kind of overgrown like crazy. And it's, it's really wild to see how much this stuff has grown. Uh, these tea plants are about five feet tall, which they haven't lost a single leaf, <laughs> which is really rare. I don't see that in North Florida very much. Usually you have like a little, a little top to the tea plants, not a full, stem of leaves. All right, anyway, back to the subject of Colocasia. Another interesting fact. Uh, one last thing about these guys is because they get so big and uh, these clumpers really took over, it seems like the illustrious I have, that's the only Colocasia I started with in maybe February. Uh, we're zone nine, North Florida. Uh, we had these planted probably in late February, and they have obviously done the best. And they did have the most room to grow because not much was in this bed before uh, they were. They kind of had a lot of space to start growing. And as time has gone on this season, we've planted more in here. The illustrious is definitely the biggest. And, uh, well, I don't... Mm, let's go check out those coffee cups. Okay, so these are the coffee cups, and oh, I think I'm scared to be. <laughs> okay, so these are the coffee cups, and you know these are big, but I forgot I can't really take credit for how big they are because we got them fairly large from. Ray. So my conclusion from that is if you can get the colocasia in there at the beginning of the season, the natural tendency for plants to grow in the spring is a big help and they're very fast growers. Uh, you'll see more new leaves on a colocasia than maybe any other new plant, uh, at least a tropical plant. They're very fast growing and if you treat them right, they won't flop over. They'll flop over when they don't get enough water. So if you see a colocasia flopping over, it's time to water it. Uh, there could be a few other problems with it, but generally it's because it's dry and it's sad and it wants water. Say, water please. Okay, so I don't have too much more to share about colocasia um, that I can think of. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment and uh, I will try to respond or just find us over in the Alocasia Colocasia Xanthosoma um, Facebook group because there's a lot of good answers over there on that Facebook group. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, look for more plant videos to come in the future. Uh, we have, this is not our full-time job, but it feels like one. It's our full-time release <laughs> from the stress and struggles of COVID, quarantine, and frustrations of life. And subscribe if you want to see more. I'll see you next time. Ahoy, plant lovers.